Hey Rat Bags, it's part three of my special survival shows. This week, taking a look at the big survival games you're going to be playing in 2023. Go and check out the previous two videos where I took a look at all the big updates, DLC, and content that's incoming for your biggest and favorite survival games this year, as well as the new survival games that are still going to release by the end of 2022. But today, it's a bit further out. The games that have got either release dates or we're hoping to see something on next year. Let's go, it's the Big Survivor Games 2023. Coming out of almost nowhere, Return to Moria could be the Deep Rock Galactic Lords of the Rings crossover you didn't know you needed. This is going to be a big co-op player game, procedurally generated maps where you're basically mining underground like a good dwarf or two. Set after the events of the movies and books, you are returning to Moria to return it to its former glories. You're going to have to take out plenty of orcs and maybe other creatures as you gather new ores, resources, refine, craft new weapons, upgrades and more. Expect loads of freeform base building, exploration of up to three different unique locations set within procedure generated universe and like I said crafting and building and getting new weapons and armor sets to take on them bad guys. This is published by North Beach Games and it's going to be coming to the Epic Games Store first at some point in early 2023. If they get this right, this could be one of the biggest hits of the year. Who doesn't love a bit of Lord of the Rings and some proper survival action for once instead of just RPG or action adventure? As long as these release dates hold, the beginning of 2023 is looking to be stacked. The day before, is it vaporware? Is it an actual game? We'll find out maybe by next March but probably doubt it. This game's had so many controversies already, as well as a whole bunch of delays, and we still don't really know if it's a real type of game. Well, it has to be said, we've actually seen more gameplay from the day before than we've seen of Starfield. If you haven't heard about this game, imagine a Division crossover with something like DayZ, and you get the idea. A huge MMO exploring a city landscape as well as countryside, using vehicles, finding loot and shooting other players, as well as surviving against the Zeds. The most wish-listed game on Steam as of right now, even with all the delays and issues. The latest of them issues being the devs announcing they want unhired staff or volunteers to help them work on the game, which seems to have caused a big fracas. The game has looked too good to be true for a long time now. Fingers crossed it can maybe live up to even just a quarter of what it promises and I'll be down for playing this eventually when it arrives on Steam and eventually console in the far future. But yeah, let's not count our chickens too much. Let's see if this game actually ever appears. So I clearly mentioned it earlier, but yeah, Starfield. It was great seeing some gameplay at last, seeing what the game's going to be all about. Sure, the reception was a little bit muted, people comparing it to obviously No Man's Sky or No Man's Skyrim. And there are some similarities, but you could say that about a whole host of games. The important thing to me is, is it going to be interesting to go and explore over a thousand different planets? Will they just be empty husks? We'll have to wait and see, but for sure I'm intrigued. The gameplay did look a bit generic and even some of the dialogue felt like it was borrowed from the 90s. I'm also not mad keen on what they showed in terms of engagement with NPCs, looking like they're bringing back the focus talking to them, whereas that kind of slows down a lot of the gameplay for me. But the ship customization that they're gonna be having in the game looks amazing. And if they've got the actual balance right between landing on a planet, exploring, and then being able to go through space and get into dogfights, then Starfield could be a real big potential great game. Of course, you should know by now it's not coming to the PlayStation, it's gonna be an Xbox and Steam exclusive. I've always been a big lover of the Elder Scrolls, particularly Skyrim rather than the Fallout universe, so I'm hoping that this kind of blends well, and I absolutely love No Man's Sky, so maybe it will be the game for me. So finally, Wildcard confirms what I've been saying for ages, R2 was delayed in fact until next year, and during the Xbox Bethesda Showcase, where they announced obviously all the games that will be launching within the next 12 months, Ark was included. So we're expecting it again before March 2023. And again, it will be an Xbox and PC exclusive, although only timed, it will eventually make its way to PlayStation in the future and apparently even the Switch. So what did we get to actually find out? Well, a big radical departure. Ark is giving up its first person viewpoint and going full on third person Dark Souls style combat. NPCs, much more advanced AI with the dinosaurs that actually have proper ecosystems and AI that will make them go around, hunt, stalk and pretty much be more alive. 
and seemingly some sort of God of War style single player campaign with you as Big Vin protecting your daughter. I can't think of a more radical departure from one game to its sequel than what we're seeing here. Now of course there are some other exciting things if some of that is a little bit apprehensive. Mod support is going to be a feature and it's going to be crossplay between Steam and Xbox and it looks like the modded support they're introducing is pretty groundbreaking, allowing proper full blown mods that you'll be able to play on Steam or your Xbox. They've already suggested that models will be able to add in a first person mode for players that really want it and they are still somehow keeping the mechanics of multiplayer in the game as well. There will be PvP and PvE servers. Yada 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 improvements to the engine so bases won't be laggy and ability to customise and make your own unique weapons with impossible millions of combinations. It all sounds far too good to be true and from the masters of hype in wildcard, take it with a pinch of salt. But yeah, it's definitely going to be one of the biggest releases next year and I'm sure a huge amount of art fans will love to play it. Let's just hope the changes don't put off too many people. If that's all a bit too much, how about a bit more chilled survival experience? In fact, this is more of a farming sim than an actual full blown survival, but I'll be covering it on my second channel, Jcraft. Lightyear Frontier is coming to Xbox and Steam again. It's a big time to be an Xbox player, as you can realise you're getting the majority of the survival games coming to your platform first or exclusively. This game is very early, still in alpha at the moment, pretty much Stardew Valley but with mech robots that you'll be able to get in and out with as you build up your homestead, gather resources, set out your farm and make some friends along the way. It's going to be a co-op game as well, I'm really looking forward to this one. There's so many little indie games coming out next year that I'm really keeping an eye on. Derelicts is one of them, made by a solo developer utilising the Unreal Engine 5 which they've just migrated over to and it's got some phenomenal features. You will be returning to Earth to pretty much see if it's habitable after some ecological event has meant that mutants have taken over. You'll build, you'll craft, you'll survive as you normally would in most survival games but the elements of base defence look pretty interesting and unique and the way that you're going to have to power up certain things by harnessing water, electricity as well as avoiding storms. Huge sensation with viral videos across TikTok and Twitter, Derelix is definitely one to keep an eye on, it's going to be promising co-op gameplay as well. Automation, that base defence, base building and exploration in dungeons and more is looking like a good one. Oh yeah, and I've got a doggo that you can pet too. No firm release date, but he was trying to see if he could release it towards the end of the year. But yeah, that was probably ambitious. So I'm expecting at a midway point that we'll start seeing more activity and probably towards the end of 2023 to be honest. But you never know. So I love it when I'm proven wrong. Not that I really dogged on Renown, I just haven't really covered it because after an interview with the devs I felt like they maybe lacked a bit of experience and I kind of felt that this idea of theirs might not really come to fruition and so I'm so pleased to see that they're making good progress. They've just set up a brand new alpha combat test I do believe that people could take part in and it looks like the game is coming together nicely. It's pretty much medieval rust with full on base raiding, PvP and PvE components and more. Game dev is super hard and even the best ideas need some real dedication and sometimes a real just show of the progress you're making and that's what Renown's been doing. No firm release dates yet, they may even decide to release it this year, who knows, but I would like them to spend as long as they could fleshing out the world and just getting more and more features added to the game. There's obviously a lot to test with a multiplayer game like this and we've all seen what happens if your ideas aren't fleshed out enough or they just simply aren't going to be received well like Last Oasis. But absolutely, the idea of renown but a proper survival MMO, proper PvP with castle, base raiding and more sounds right up my street. I do have big wide variety in the games I like in terms of survival and Outpost Galatia is very different from Renown. It's going to be a co-op focused game where again there's automation but you're surviving in some sort of chilly cold environment against all sorts of wildlife and maybe some sort of more alien like creatures. As you gather the usual resources to set up generators I'm guessing to keep you warm and run electricity for your crafting. I've put this on a bunch of list videos over the last few years. It started out as an itch.io project and they're making firm progress. They do have periods where they go quite big distances without much going on, but that's to be expected from a small team. What I really like about this is it's got that kind of cartoony style. It's not going to be too serious and it does look like they're going to be taking full advantage of them co-op modes. 
Progress has started to ramp up, it looks like they're going to be adding procedural generation to the maps to keep things interesting and more, so I just can't wait to get some more firm details about this. The Minecraft Killer. That's what Hytale is meant to be. Made by the former team that made so much of the high pixel servers for Minecraft, full of experience in modding the game, but now they're making their own. They've now got the backing of Riot Games and Tencent, and they did take the unusual step of even in 2021 announcing the game wouldn't be coming out until at least 2023. They're promising all sorts. The ability to make your own custom worlds, game modes and more. Use proper inbuilt cinematics with this one and RPG elements alongside the typical survival stuff. Yes, it's always going to be called the Minecraft clone, but it does seem to be delivering more and more of the features that so many players love and really would like to see more fleshed out even in Minecraft. More fantasy world with typical enemies, but obviously still with that blocky nature, allowing that creative freedom to build what you want and do whatever you like. Its first trailer generated millions of views, probably one of the most watched in 2020. I'm looking forward to seeing if we do get some sort of release in 2023. Another game that has no firm concrete details about when it's coming out, but State of the K3, we're assuming might be the end of 2023 or maybe 2024. But what kind of game is it? We've seen nothing other than this cinematic trailer shown off two years ago now nearly. Rumours pointing to it being a full-on MMO style survival game this time, not just four player or six player co-op, but actually having PvP maybe encounters with other players, and of course a ratcheting up of the zombie action, with a whole bunch of different creatures now being zombified. The fo trader always focused on like a lone survivor, so maybe it's going to be more online with that rather than running around from towns to cities and just basically doing fetch quests or fortifications. Truth is, we just don't know enough. We still have not seen much else, and we've only got them glimpses of what it could be from their previous founder who left the company and said that it's more in line with their original vision for an MMO state of decay. I personally think it needs it. I don't want to see just a third version of the two games we've already seen, which is maybe more bad guys. I do want to see some sort of departure, something a bit different. So having that MMO features or PvP features, I'll be totally down for it. So another one of them sort of mini viral videos or clips, Rooted showed off what it seemed to be Last of Us kind of graphics, but a survival game. Their most recent little clips show a bit more what we're used to, scum style kind of gameplay, typical survivors walking around and typical base building that you've seen before. So I'm not really sure why Rooted has got so much attention in such a short space of time. I mean, sure, it does look pretty, but most games will in Unreal Engine 5 or the latest version of Unity incoming. And to my mind, it just doesn't look like there's anything we haven't really seen before. And it's still very, very early stages. With the bulk of what we've seen being made out of assets that have already been utilized from the store rather than actually custom stuff, although that is starting to now come into the game more. There are a million survival games where you're running around facing off against zombies in a wilderness somewhere. So hopefully Rooted can stand up from the crowd and start showing a bit more like these drones. That would certainly be something that marks it a bit different from the others. Definitely keep my eyes on this one, but yeah, a little bit of skepticism about whether or not it's really truly delivering something different. Or at the very least, doing something really well from a small team. More MMO style action with Bitcraft. It's meant to be a game where you might not actually have much combat, not with other players certainly. A kind of MMO game where you kind of make a mark in the world with your profession or your job. You'll be able to play with others of course, but the ways that you communicate will be very different. It seems to be a world about journeying and setting up bases and settlements that some people can become leaders of and seemingly there will be some way to nominate them. Typical stuff like gathering resources and fishing, it's got a very unique sort of abstract art style, which I'm really down for. And yeah, definitely coming along. They've had a few Q&As that probably need me going over in a separate new video. I'm looking forward to seeing more details about Bitcraft coming out hopefully in 2023. Just when we thought we'd had enough of Vikings, along comes Sky. This is again being made by a very small team and it's a survival game set on the Scottish Islands. Absolutely stunning looking. They are also migrating over to Unreal Engine 5. The landscape, the atmosphere looks amazing. Can the gameplay match it? That's the question. It's going to be a multiplayer 
PvP kind of PvE focus game, very much in the same vein as things like Ark or Conan etc. Obviously exploring different lands, gathering resources and trying to survive against Vikings as well as maybe other players. Base building, the usual coup, definitely one to keep an eye on. Got big presence on Instagram and stuff like that, showcasing a lot of the work that's been going into the game, which I love to see. And hopefully we do get some sort of early access in 2023. They've got a bunch of alphas going forward and it seems like work has progressed nicely. Another one of them games that's been around for years now, they were a small tiny team making a dinosaur survival game, but very much more like Green Hell, with a story focus, much more smaller environments or world map to explore, but with more kind of interaction with the dangerous creatures. So you wouldn't be just running around taming them, you'd actually be in fear of pretty much every dinosaur you come across. I've been a bit harsh on their trailer that they showed off a good few years ago now, but it seems like whatever they did, it got enough to secure some proper funding from a big publisher after being available as a Kickstarter backed project. So news has gone a little bit quiet in most recent months, but that's usually a sign that they're going to be showing something off soon or a big announcement. So yeah, I'm predicting that 2023 will be when we finally see Gona come to life. Wild Planet is another one of them little indie games that I'm really rooting for. I would lose my mind if the only survival games I could play were first person or third person. Give me something a bit different. And this is kind of promising that. This top down view, reminiscent of old, old school RPGs, but a full blown survival game where when you die or you come across other players, you might be coming across the relics of the past in terms of their actual ruins, their bases being left there for you to discover with time playing an important factor in the game. To be honest, lots could have changed. They're a small little team as well again. I've been showing this off on the indie circuit for the last couple of years. So fingers crossed we get some sort of firm news about early access. But yeah, I like the look of this one. Colourful, unique art style, very different from the rest of the games we've shown. Subnautica 3! Yes, it's obviously not gameplay and we haven't even got an official reveal yet, but we do know it's been worked on as Charlie Cleveland, the creator of Subnautica, did comment on one of my previous videos talking about it. So, we know it's happening, we don't strictly know what kind of game it's going to be, we're predicting it will be still a survival, it's definitely going to have some sort of multiplayer element to it, that's what Charlie confirmed to me. And the studio is actually working on another few projects as well, including some sort of RTS strategy game. Obviously, one of the most popular survival game series in most recent years. Below Zero didn't maybe hit the mark as much as the original, with a lot of players missing that creative freedom or the kind of lands to explore, with the story element just being a bit too forced. No one can deny that Subnautica is a great looking little game, and I've always enjoyed the story elements and stuff with the guiding you through, just as long as I don't get too scared exploring the depths and getting eaten by the Leviathans. I'm just so pleased they'll be finally adding multiplayer. It's what I thought that both the original games really needed, even as just an extra mode. If it didn't really make sense with the story, it'd just be really cool. If the forest can have four dads looking for Timmy, why can't we have four explorers trying to get away from the big corporation as they explore the depths? So yeah, I'm expecting some sort of little tease later on at some of the gaming shows and hopefully a 2023 early access release, which I'm sure they'll go through again. And then finishing off with towers, you may be wondering what's going on why I've included a whole bunch of other sort of zombie open world survival games. So many of them just look like clones that I'm kind of getting fatigued and seeing the same crap. Give me something different and that's what towers is offering. We've gone really silent, this game got announced nearly four years ago now I swear and it's only in the last few months we've seen some more life stressing that they have now got some sort of publisher and backing but no new gameplay only a few pieces of concept art shared in the Discord and a few announcements to say that the game is still being worked on. Hold tight. So what is Towers if you'd missed it, my coverage from all that time ago? Well, it's meant to be an MMO style server based game, survival, where you've got a litany of new creatures to go and explore and tame as you grow and transform your little kingdom. Difference is in how you win. It may not strictly be full PvP. There's elements of PvE base defense by the looks of things protecting your area or land from horrific dark creatures. And the idea is that whoever gets their tower built up to the top will win the kind of game mode. Now things have changed since then I'm sure and been refined and they might have a bit more of a clearer vision. So we'll have to really wait and see what happens with this one. But absolutely when this tech demo got first revealed it was blowing my mind that something like this looks so polished. But we know that some of this stuff can be a little bit too rehearsed. But absolutely taming in it, 
new unique creatures, new unique art style, I'm totally down. So there we go. If there is a particular survival game that you think I might have an interest in, do let me know. Show me it at me on Twitter or come join my Discord to talk to me about it or absolutely just leave a good comment down below and tell me what the name of it is and I'll check it out. Go and check out the previous videos as I mentioned if you want to keep up to date with all the big survival games news and I'll see you for more list videos and more survival stuff very soon. Until next time Ratbags, laters.